we got a new project on the bench today. It uh, almost feels strange. I know the past few weeks I've done uh, the Fluke 87 review, and before that I think I did some 8020B stuff. But it's kind of weird actually having a, a new meter on the bench. This is a Fluke 17B. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It is the Fluke 17, um, which is the older version of the 17B. I believe the B has a few extra little functions. This is actually a pretty basic meter. But as for what's wrong with it, it was sold as sitting in water. And it shows that very well, especially if you look at this uh, paperback shielding. You can see where all the water was at. The little piezo crystal speaker has some uh, tarnish on it. I've already actually cleaned that up a little. But it the display doesn't show anything when it's powered on. And there's a few obvious problems that I can see. One of them is that this resistor here is actually broken. So we're going to replace that. And also this little variable resistor is missing it should look like this one here if I can get it to focus so that's gonna actually be a open there there's no continuity also these capacitors here look like they actually kind of caught the the worst of the water so we'll be replacing those there's a clock crystal underneath there. I don't know if you will be able to see it. But I don't have one of those. So I may end up removing it and just trying to clean it up and putting it back on. Also, this little hex inverter here. I don't have one of those to replace this one with. But I'm hoping that I can just clean up some of the tarnish on it. And there may be a few other resistors on here. I see you're pretty heavily corroded. We may go ahead and swap those out. But I'm going to kind of start with the minimum to fix this, which is going to involve replacing this. The closest one I have is a 201, which I believe is supposed to be a 202, much like this one. But we'll see if we can at least get it working. We may look into getting the proper one, or this one may work just fine. Uh, there's also some electrolytics on here that may or may not be replaced. I'm also hoping that these transistors will be okay. Um, those aren't too hard to find, but I'm kind of hoping to get this thing working in one video and not have to order parts and track stuff down in order to try to get this thing functioning. I also don't want to put a whole lot into it because these meters are kind of flukes lower level stuff i think that this one is actually a made in the usa one no this is engineered in usa made in china so i think this is actually one of flukes earlier you know kind of testing the waters on these chinese made meters it really doesn't look bad but i would like to get it functioning to the point where we can do some testing on it and see if it's actually you know still a quality meter so i'll get to desoldering and changing some of these parts out and i'll get back with y'all later okay so i've got most of these components desoldered that i wanted to on this side i went ahead and removed the battery connector just to give me access to these points here these little solder points and when i was trying to clean up all of these uh, what I like to do is take a little bit of solder and put on my gun and just kind of wipe it across the pads just to it kind of just helps clean things up and then later on I'll whip that off but I noticed that on the ground pad of my battery it's gone because it wouldn't take any solder so whenever I flip the board over and inspect it close and I may end up getting the microscope out here just because this, it makes it easier. But you can see how on the positive side we do have a little bit of solder, a little ring right there. But 
on the ground side here there's nothing it's straight PCB but there is a little bit of trace here so I think we may be able to just kind of do a little bit of etching on that trace and ground it there if not I'm um, replacing the battery connector anyways so we might be able to actually trace it because I do have a fairly long connector we may be able to trace it once we remove if we remove this hex, hex inverter we can trace it to another ground point and just put a jumper in there but that may actually be the reason why the meter wasn't turning on was because it had no continuity here and it couldn't find the ground but we'll go ahead and replace the rest of the components anyways because I, I know that some of these are obviously bad but I just wanted to show that to y'all right whenever I found it okay so I went ahead and set up the microscope just to kind of show in a little bit better detail what's going on with this battery terminal and you can see that the pad has just been ripped off and that's not something that I really did um, I've made it come all the way off but this is actually a result of corrosion what happens is this little copper trace here will start to get corroded and it's already so thin that it doesn't take a whole lot for it to just become extremely extremely weak and the littlest bit of messing with it um, whenever I was desoldering this connector here is actually what finished ripping it off and just obliterated it but you can okay so here we're uh, installing a jumper to repair that trace and you can see I'm tinning the wire here just to make it a little bit easier to handle because it's not a, a solid strand wire it does have a lot of strands in there and once I've got it bent over in place I'm using the tweezers and the soldering iron I changed to a bent tip for that tight little space just to kind of roughly tack it in place and to get it to where I can add a little bit more solder I'm actually putting the solder on my tip um, that's why I'm adding flux here is because the solder's already been the flux has already been burned out of the solder but you can see that I'm using the tweezers and the tip and the tip of the iron to just kind of work that a little bit to make sure I get a good solid joint on that trace and then I'm gonna actually use the tweezers to kind of nudge the trace around a little bit just to make sure it's nice and solid and that's about it on that okay so we've got um all of our components replaced at least our first batch of components uh, the battery connectors back on these caps have been replaced this resistor has been replaced this variable resistor here has been replaced and for the hex inverter I've still got some flux to clean off the board too all I did was a little bit of uh, rework on it basically just taking the iron and uh, I used the chisel tip on it but just kind of reheating these pads and adding a little solder where it needed it um, just to kind of remelt it and adding that fresh solder in there with the flux is gonna help get rid of some of that tarnish and clean it up some and hopefully make any bonds that may have been bad good again so we'll put it back together and see what happens Okay, so just to conclude the first phase of this repair, it does look like I have a short inside of this hex inverter IC, and I don't have one to replace it with, so I'll be ordering that, and I'm also trying to get a, a vacuum desoldering station, which is a really cool tool for doing things like this. It'll make it a lot simpler than trying to desolder it by hand. Um, the hot air rework station we may give that a shot if I can't get the vacuum station but I'm really not sure that it'll be up to doing a task like this 
Um, but stay tuned for the next video. Um, hopefully we'll get this swapped out. I think another thing we may do is actually put this IC and the new one on a breadboard and try to input a few signals into it. And we'll kind of talk about what hex inverters do and what it could possibly be doing in this circuit. Um, I'm trying to get a schematic for it so that we can get a definite answer. Um, if I don't get that, then we may never, we may never know. But I think that it'll definitely, it's definitely something that's worth changing. It's not a very expensive part, and I think that it may be the last thing that this meter needs before it's functioning. Um, you can see in the videos that it does get up to 230 degrees, I believe, almost uh, in Fahrenheit that that is just insane and also um i did check the current draw on it through the battery and it's drawing somewhere in the neighborhood of like 685 milliamps which is absolutely insane for this meter so i really believe that that short is in there and if we replace that chip we will more than likely have a working meter so Stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And be careful.